I'm pretty sure we can guess, but just, just outline to our viewers what exactly it is you want. Why are you out there right now on hunger strike? Yes, yeah, so I'm on hunger strike um, in front of the Foreign Office. Uh, this is day two, and the reason for that is, is because of the jeopardy that Nazanin's in. Um, we had uh, um, last weekend, um, she was given a new sentence. She's going to be put back in prison um, any time soon. Um, I spoke to the foreign, new Foreign Secretary Liz Truss and asked her what consequences there will be for Iran for adding this new sentence on um, to the first one. Um, and, you know, she was, said she was very angry, but um, he wasn't going to do anything until Nazanin was put back into prison, um, which for me uh, is too late. So the things that i have been talking about with the government behind closed doors uh, were four things, which are the demands that we put on the hunger strike. Um, one is to acknowledge that Nazanin is a hostage. She's not just being in prison because of anything that she's done, but she's being held as leverage. The second is that, that the UK needs to start uh, challenging the perpetrators, punishing the perpetrators, which means things like sanctions um, yeah. for those involved um, and things like taking Iran to court, international courts. Um, thirdly, uh, the reason why Iran's doing it is, is this debt dispute. They need to settle that. It's not just Nazanin. There are a number of others who are being held. And I don't think it makes British citizens safer uh, to you know, have these angry guys and just keep winding them up by not giving them their money back. Um, and fourthly, you know, Nazanin is held uh, alongside a number of other people. Iran does this to a great extent. The reason it does it uh, is because uh, um, it's looking for leverage among, with other countries in lots of ways. There are these big nuclear negotiations going on. Um, they need to make uh, an end to hostage taking, a commitment that all parties make as part of those negotiations. So those are the four demands, um, and, and we'll, see, we'll see how the government responds. Uh, you mentioned there you, you spoke to the new Foreign Secretary, Liz Truss. Um, there's been a quick succession over the last few years of uh, Foreign Secretaries. There was Boris Johnson, there was Jeremy Hunt, J uh, Dominic Raab, obviously outgoing, and now Liz Truss. Do you feel like that has meant that this issue hasn't been given the due attention it needs? It hasn't been given that concerted effort. And do you have any faith in Liz Truss um, to, to you know, do anything differently to any of the previous Foreign Secretaries? So, so I think I mean I think we've had lots of attention, and you know many people will have seen our story in, in different forms. Um, I, I think the changeover, and we've had yeah a turnover of five foreign secretaries. Um, what it means is that, that the strategy keeps keeps changing and chopping, and you know we've had the things that Boris Johnson promised disappeared when Jeremy Hunt became foreign secretary. Things that Jeremy Hunt promised disappeared when Dominic Raab became foreign secretary. Things that Dominic Raab promised have now disappeared. That there's trust to become it. There's a reset each time. Uh, where, where Whitehall sort of establishes this is how it's going to be and, and it takes a while for a new minister to, to get their bearings and to decide what they're willing to do. Um, so yeah, we've, we've, we've been held in the waiting room for a long time um, and it, it does feel to me that, that actually the government's approach, which essentially is just to wait until the Iranians act reasonably, um, you know, it hasn't worked for five and a half years. If we went for five and a half years more, I think we'd get the same results. Yeah, I mean, you, I think you might be waiting a long time for the Iranian government to act reasonably, as, as you well know. I suppose maybe one benefit is that, you know, Liz Truss does have a, a, a track record of, of getting deals done. Hopefully this is a deal that she can actually get sorted. Um, just in terms of Razni's condition, how is she, what kind of conditions is she, is she being kept in at the moment? What, what's the situation? Yeah, well, so at the moment she, she's waiting to be summoned to prison. So, so actually she's not, you know, her material conditions are, um, and she's at home. Um, stressed, um, probably, you know, the f emotional role, roller coaster she went on would have been shock followed by anger, followed by sadness. Um, uh, you know, she processes that it's all going to happen again and it'll be a couple more years. Um, and, and also probably right now a bit of worry. Um, you know, I'm out here on the streets. Um, it's only day day two, so it's not too far. But um, it is a bit precarious, um, and you know, she'll worry as to how long this goes on for.